Dofetilide and Ibutilide are class 3 antiarrhythmic drugs used to treat abnormal heart rhythms. In this mnemonic video, we'll cover the important facts about Dofetilide and Ibutilide so you'll be ready come test day. I'm a high school basketball coach in Hawaii where I'm coaching some players before the homecoming basketball game. Since I'm also responsible for washing the players' jerseys after practice, I've brought a duffel bag full of Tilide branded detergent. You might even call it Duffel Tilide. This Duffel Tilide should help you remember Dofetilide, the first drug we'll be covering in this video. To make sure I'm presentable for practice, I'm checking my appearance with a compact mirror made by Apple. It has a built-in light, which is why it's called the Eye Beauty Light. This Eye Beauty Light is our symbol for Ibutilide, the other drug we'll be covering in this video. As you can tell by the shared ending of Tilide, Ibutilide and Dofetilide are related drugs that belong to the same drug class. On this note, let's cover the drug class that Dofetilide and Ibutilide belong to. We've drawn this symbol in the foreground near the duffel bag and Ibutilide. I've put up a sign that reads 3 Pointer Class, since we're here working on the team's 3-point shooting ability. And after all, I want the team to be in tip-top shape for their homecoming game. This 3-pointer class should help you remember that Dofetilide and Ibutilide are Class 3 antiarrhythmics. Let's shift gears to learn how these drugs are used in the clinical setting. To keep these symbols organized, we've clustered them towards the right side. The basketball court has a screen to broadcast the game. However, someone broke the screen today, so there's static running across it. By the way, don't you think this static looks like an arrhythmia on a rhythm strip? The arrhythmia-like static is our recurring symbol for cardiac arrhythmias, a group of medical conditions in which the heart beats with an irregular rhythm. Next, notice how a repairman is fixing the screen. Fixing the arrhythmia-like static symbolizes how dofetilide and ibutilide fix or treat arrhythmias. In other words, they are antiarrhythmics. So what types of arrhythmias do these drugs treat? Let's cover these next. The screen was broken by someone trying to sabotage our home team, possibly someone from the opposing team. School security has caught a suspect and put them into a lie detector for interrogation. However, the lie detector is malfunctioning, as it is reporting everything the boy says as a fib, as in a lie. The phrase a fib should remind you of, well, a fib, which is short for atrial fibrillation. Breaking down this term, atrial refers to the atria, or upper chambers of the heart, while fibrillation refers to a pattern of rapid and irregular contractions that makes it appear as if a muscle is twitching or vibrating. Putting this together, atrial fibrillation refers to an abnormal heart rhythm in which the atria of the heart are beating rapidly and irregularly. On a cardiac rhythm strip, this looks like an irregular and rapid heartbeat, which resembles the line produced by this lie detector. Since the lie detector machine is broken, another repairman has been tasked with fixing it. Fixing the AFib machine should help you remember how dofetilide and ibutilide treat AFib. Let's cover a related detail in our next symbol. Nearby, a music conductor is practicing with the school band ahead of the game tonight. No homecoming game would be complete without music from the band, right? This conductor should help you remember how dofetilide and ibutilide are used for rhythm control in the treatment of AFib. After all, his job is to control the rhythm of the music, right? When we say rhythm control, we mean that dofetilide and ibutilide aim to restore or maintain a normal heart rhythm in patients with AFib. This is in contrast to rate control drugs, which aim to simply slow down the heart rate without affecting the rhythm. As rhythm control drugs, dofetilide and ibutilide are mainly used for two purposes. One, to actively convert an abnormal AFib rhythm into a normal heart rhythm, and two, to prevent a relapse back into AFib. Since we're in Hawaii, this school has an atrium with glass walls to appreciate the local wildlife and scenery. This atrium is also where the school's homecoming dance will be held tonight, which is why the school has hung a big heart at the top of the atrium. The atrium should remind you of the atria, and the heart at the top of the atrium symbolizes how the atria are the upper chambers of the heart. As a spectacle for the homecoming dance, the school was going to release a ton of fluttering butterflies into the atrium. However, the guy suspected of sabotaging our homecoming event messed things up by releasing the butterflies early. The fluttering butterflies in the atrium is our symbol for atrial flutter. Atrial flutter is an arrhythmia that involves unusually fast and regular atrial contractions in a manner that resembles the fluttering of butterfly wings. Because the butterflies were not supposed to be released yet, the worker is trying to catch and remove the butterflies. The way she is removing the fluttering butterflies from the atrium should help you remember how dofetilide and ibutilide can remove or treat atrial flutter. Next, let's discuss the mechanisms behind how these drugs work. 
To keep these symbols organized, we've clustered them towards the left side. This gym contains a concession stand, and while a basketball player waits for his food, he is doing some last-minute cramming for his upcoming exam. Looking inside his bag, you'll see a reminder that no notes are allowed during the exam, since using notes would be cheating. We use notes to represent nodal tissue because notes sounds like nodes, and nodal tissue refers to tissue found inside the nodes of the heart. So the no notes sign should help you remember that dofetilide and ibutilide primarily act on non-nodal tissue. Let's review this diagram of the heart with the atria above and the ventricles below. Electrical conduction begins in the SA node and travels through the atria to reach the AV node. The AV node then conducts these impulses down through the his Purkinje system into the ventricles below. This pattern of electrical activation allows for contractions to move from the atria to the ventricles in a normal heartbeat. Switching to a broader perspective, the electrical activity of cardiac cells inside the SA and AV nodes, or nodal tissue, is very different from cells in the rest of the heart, which we'll call non-nodal tissue. It's important to note that dofetilide and ibutilide act primarily on non-nodal tissue. Inside the concessions window, a worker is preparing snacks for the basketball team. To do so, she's operating a chute that dispenses frozen bananas. Eating bananas can prevent cramps while playing basketball, and freezing the bananas helps the player cool down after practice. By the way, bananas are our recurring symbol for potassium, so a banana shoot is our symbol for potassium channels, since this banana shoot and potassium channels both work by moving potassium from one place to another. However, there's something wrong with the banana shoot, which is why the food worker is closing the door of the shoot while she tries to fix the problem. You might even say that she is blocking the shoot. Blocking the banana shoot represents how dofetilide and ibutilide work to block potassium channels. All class 3 antiarrhythmics work by blocking potassium channels. And like we mentioned earlier, dofetilide and ibutilide are class 3 antiarrhythmics. As for how blocking these channels affects the heart and helps treat arrhythmias, let's cover that next. Since there isn't a freezer in the gym, the food workers use ice packs to keep the frozen bananas cold. In particular, they are repolarized branded ice packs, known for being refreezable between uses. The repolarized ice packs are our recurring symbol for repolarization. To understand what repolarization means, let's zoom into a non-nodal cardiac myocyte and review its action potential. On this graph, the y-axis represents membrane voltage, while the x-axis represents the progression of time. The normal cardiac action potential starts with a steep rise in voltage, which activates the cell. This is followed by a relatively flat plateau phase, which ends with a fall in voltage to reset the cell ahead of the next activation. Each rise in voltage corresponds with a contraction of the cell in a heartbeat. Repolarization refers to the part of the action potential in which the voltage falls back to its baseline. This is crucial in preparing the heart cell for the next heartbeat. Importantly, repolarization is primarily driven by the movement of potassium ions through potassium channels. Taking a closer look at the repolarized ice pack, notice the graphic showing a polar bear sliding down a mountain. Doesn't the shape of this mountain remind you of the shape of an action potential? The polar bear is sliding down the right side of the mountain, corresponding to the repolarization of the cell. Next, notice how these ice packs are actually long-duration ice packs, meaning that they stay cold for an extra long time after being taken out of the freezer. The long-duration repolarized ice packs symbolize how dofetilide and ibutilide prolong repolarization. Since it is very hot in this gym, the food worker has brought out a lot of these long-duration ice packs. This represents how these drugs substantially or markedly prolong repolarization. Returning to our graph of the cardiac action potential, let's show the curve after taking dofetilide or ibutilide. These drugs markedly prolong repolarization by blocking potassium channels. This pushes the fall in voltage right and effectively slows down the resetting of the cell. If it helps, notice how the snow the polar bear is sliding on makes the right side of the mountain look thicker. This can help you remember what prolonged repolarization looks like in the cardiac action potential. Since it's so hot inside the gym, the players open the windows to get some fresh air from outside. However, as we are in Hawaii, it turns out that the nearby volcano is erupting, making it even hotter inside the gym. By the way, the word erupt should remind you of ERP, since the letters E, R, and P are found in erupt. Bringing back our graphic of the normal cardiac action potential, ERP stands for Effective Refractory Period and refers to a period immediately following the rise of an action potential during which the heart cell is temporarily unable to activate again. You can think of this as the time it takes the voltage in the cell to reset before it can fire again. 
In a similar vein, since this volcano just erupted, it has now returned to being dormant and needs some time to reset before it can erupt again. If you look closely, you'll notice the shape of the volcano even resembles that of the cardiac action potential. A ranger is measuring the horizontal length of the volcano, which corresponds to the length of the ERP. However, because of the eruption, there is new lava flowing down the volcano, so the length being measured has increased. This can help you remember how dofetilide and ibutilide increase the length of the ERP. Returning to our graphic of the ERP, let's now bring back the change in the action potential after the patient takes dofetilide or ibutilide. As you can see, the prolonged repolarization is what causes a lengthened ERP. Since arrhythmias are caused by rapid electrical activations, lengthening the refractory period during which the cell is unable to activate again can stop the arrhythmia. This explains how dofetilide and ibutilide can treat arrhythmias like AFib and atrial flutter and return the heart to a normal rhythm. Let's return to the basketball player studying for his upcoming exam. The boy is reviewing for an AP exam, which is our recurring symbol for the AP or action potential. Because his AP review is super long, he even needs to study during basketball practice. This long AP review should help you remember that dofetilide and ibutilide can prolong the AP duration. Let's return to our diagram of the cardiac action potential. Here, we've shown how long an action potential normally lasts. In other words, this is the AP duration. Dofetilide and ibutilide prolong the repolarization of the cell, which also prolongs the AP duration. Before we move on, I want to point out that a prolonged AP duration, markedly prolonged repolarization, and an increased length in the ERP, which we covered earlier, are all interconnected concepts. You can think of them all as various consequences of blocking potassium channels. As it turns out, the banana chute in the concessions window is broken because it's been clogged by a clump of frozen bananas. Resourcefully, the worker has pulled out a long Q-tip and is snaking it down the chute to break apart the clump. The Q-tip is our recurring symbol for the QT interval. So this long Q-tip should help you remember how dofetilide and ibutilide can prolong the QT interval. On a normal EKG, the QT interval is the line between the beginning of the QRS complex and the end of the T wave. It's worth noting that the T wave is generated by the repolarization of the ventricles. Dofetilide and ibutilide prolong repolarization, which lengthens the T wave to cause a prolonged QT interval. Finally, let's cover one side effect that you might see in patients taking dofetilide or ibutilide. To celebrate the special homecoming game tonight, the school has decorated the gym with twisted streamers. These twisted streamers should remind you that dofetilide and ibutilide can cause torsa de point. Torsa de point is a specific type of arrhythmia characterized by a twisting pattern on an EKG rhythm strip. Notice that it looks a lot like the shape of a twisted streamer. In this condition, the heart's electrical activity becomes chaotic and can be potentially life-threatening. While the details are out of scope for this video, prolonged repolarization in the ventricles creates an environment that increases the risk of torsade de point. This is why the side effect of torsade de point is often seen with the drugs that prolong the QT interval. All right, that's all for this mnemonic. Let's review what we've learned. Dofetilide and ibutilide belong to the class three antiarrhythmics. These drugs treat arrhythmias like AFib, where they are used for rhythm control, as well as arrhythmias like atrial flutter. Dofetilide and ibutilide act primarily on non-nodal heart tissue and work by blocking potassium channels. This markedly prolongs the repolarization of heart cells, increases the length of the ERP, prolongs the AP duration, and increases the QT interval. These drugs can cause torsade de point as a rare side effect. And now we're actually done with ibutilide and dofetilide. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, subscribe to our channel and check out our newest lessons. For more resources on this topic, including fact lists and interactive review images, click the image next to the More Here arrow. I'll see you next time.